Mississippi State, the Bulldogs 12-1 against the upstart Gamecocks coming in at 1-0 in SEC play, fresh off a comeback victory at Florida this past weekend. Damian Fishback, Roy Philpock, great to have you with us. It's a new year and a fresh start as conference play has arrived. South Carolina in the home whites, Mississippi State in the road blacks underway at the CLA Colonial Life Arena. Fish, great to be with you, and this is going to be a lot of fun this evening. Well, Happy New Year. I'm sure Oklahoma State fans will be tuned in. They play South Carolina later in the year. Three-pointer from the corner is good, and a good start for Carolina as Trey Campbell connects. Well, he is a shooting point guard. Had a very good practice yesterday. I love his shot selection, the transfer from Georgetown. Bulldogs with a couple of preseason picks in SEC play led by Quindary Weatherspoon. Inside, Abdullah Du, the first basket, makes it 3-2. So many weapons. Abdullah Du does the dirty work on this team, but has the ability to score as well. Chris Silva, preseason All-SEC in the last six games. He has been sensational and right on cue. 5-2 South Carolina. Yeah, I like this flow. And welcome those now dialed in on ESPNU here in Columbia, South Carolina. The SEC opener for Mississippi State. The Bulldogs at 12-1, and one, ranked 14th in the country. Damian Fishback, Roy Philpott courtside. Happy New Year, and let's do this. Same to you. We promised that was the first turnover of the basketball game. These two teams have been getting up and down, scoring with ease here early. Quick three-pointer by Trey Campbell. Got South Carolina off and running. Here's Silva. Nice look. Wraparound pass. Mike Kosar. Maybe Chris Silva just needed me to come back. Now, he's been playing phenomenal, 16-plus over the past five or six games. But I projected this guy as SEC Player of the Year last year. Peters off the bounce and a brilliant finish for Nick Weatherspoon. Unbelievable amount of weapons. They hit you at the guard position and at the post. Mississippi State, one of the more underrated teams in the country. A.J. Lawson off the mark. Rebound controlled by MSU. Bulldogs only lost this year against Arizona State. Weatherspoon again this time. Goaltending the call, and so the basket will count to make it a one-point contest. Ben Hallen, year four in Stark Vegas, and his team off and running this year. He's been impressive. Well, listen, the job that he did not only at Northern Arizona, Pittsburgh, that he did at UCLA. He's doing the same thing here at Mississippi State. Unbelievable coach. We've got two unbelievable coaches, both Final Four coaches, competitive guys ready to go at it. He was fired at UCLA after taking the Bruins to three Final Fours. He won the conference his last <laughs> season there. As you see, Frank Martin, year seven. You mentioned Final Four coaches, took Carolina to the Final Four two years ago, an incredible run, led by Sendarius Thornwell and a host of others. Most wins in the history of the school the last couple of years before that run. And, and quite frankly, uh, he had an outstanding career at Kansas State as well. Both coaches, if they wanted to go back to their school right now, would have a good chance. Silva with four, nine to six South Carolina, two and a half minutes in. And a good start from the field for both sides. Roy, I expect both teams, and particularly South Carolina, who uh, showed a lot of zone in the Florida game, to show some zone here fairly soon. Elbow jumper is all net for Weatherspoon, and that was silky smooth. He is a mid-range specialist, even though he's shooting better from behind the three-point line this year, Roy. Yeah, he's changed his shot, removed his left thumb from the back of the basketball to help guide it better. And the three-point shot has been there. Kotsar is short, pops out to Quindary Weatherspoon. The eldest Weatherspoon brother Woo! rejected at the rim and flying in was Keyshawn Bryant. But Weatherspoon collects and connects from distance. <laughs> That's typical Weatherspoon. It takes a lot to get this young man rattled, as does it with the Bulldog from Mississippi State. Bulldogs with their first lead at 11-9. Kotsar lost the handle. Nice defense by Eric Holman. And not sure if it's the tempo of the basketball game, but two bigs from, from the Gamecocks dragging a little bit right now. 
Well, Frank Martin told us today he's really been working with Chris Silva on lateral movement, especially defensively. Bryant intercepts that pass. And here come the Gamecocks. Silva for three. Okay, big fella. He just might be back, Southeastern Conference. 18 points in the second half versus Florida. Coach Frank Martin said he took the pressure off of him, and now he's back. And the stuff inside by Adu, he's got four. What a fun start for both of these teams. There are some dudes in this league this year, Roy. Four teams in the SEC ranked in the top 20 for the first time in seven seasons. Lawson. There's some dudes in the league. There's some teams with a chance to maybe win a championship as the foul inside. Free throws coming up when we come back here in Columbia. Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. And in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile back in Columbia. A comeback victory for Carolina on the road at Florida this past Saturday night, Fish. And the anatomy of a comeback looks like this, trailing by 14 with just over 11 minutes to go. Chris Silva, Keyshawn Bryant took the game over, as did the South Carolina defense. Yeah, they truly did. Right, Florida, for seven, and seven minutes, 17 seconds, one of 12 from the field, Silva lining playbook was truly in effect for the Gamecocks from South Carolina. Felipe Hase doing his best. Jake Bentley impersonation. The touchdown pass to Chris Silva <laughs> to complete that comeback victory. Well, now the football season is over. You get to see these passes in college hoops as well. When they knocked off this Florida team, it was a shocking surprise simply because Florida had been playing so well. They beat Butler by 30 points. They took Michigan State to a two-possession basketball game. They had won five out of their last six, and South Carolina turned it around. Last foul went against Keyshawn Bryant. It was not a shooting foul, so Mississippi State takes over. A 12-1 record and a one-point advantage. Frank Martin told us in the second part of that second half, they started to guard finally. Rejected by Silva, and that one swatted away. Well, and that's not a typical block, right? Quindary Weatherspoon is judicious at how he attacks the rim. And the ability of Chris Silva to get to that shot truly shows his mobility defensively. Picked off by Tyson Carter, who just checked in. He'll feed Weatherspoon. Three on two. And out of control was Reggie Perry, number one in black for the Bulldogs, and a former five-star recruit. Off the glass. Did he little call window it? dressing. Did he call that, Roy? Come on, let's be candid. Did he no, call but it? it still counts. <laughs> Keyshawn Bryant, the hoop. I like the shot, young fella. South Carolina, a much different team than we saw early in non-conference. Six minutes in, the runner, and the sweet kiss for Tyson Carter. Tyson Carter, my sixth man of the year thus far in the season. He has been that efficient off of the bench and has played well in the past against Mississippi State or against South Carolina. Gamecocks back to work. Asani Gravit checks in for the first time. Gravit, the second leading scorer off the bench in the SEC this year. To your point with Tyson Carter, the fourth leading scorer off the bench. Gravit's got the hair to boot, which we were very <laughs> fond of in shoot-around today. If I could grow it, I would have my hair just like Gravit. I would as well. He's got the game to go with it, though. Weatherspoon, a little stop and pop. Offensive board work there for Abdullah Du. Contact, but no whistle and an easy bucket. His six points. Well, right now, South Carolina getting dominated on the glass and in the paint. They cannot continue to allow that if they want to continue to be effective against the Bulldogs. Hase for three. Rolls it in. Big shot. Not as strong, not as athletic, but very efficient. Actually, the most efficient from the free throw line shows the type of touch that he has in effective on the offensive end. South Carolina shooting a blistering 64%. Mississippi State at 62% to start this conference affair. 
Carter lost the handle at his pocket pick by Gravit. Here comes Bryant. And Weatherspoon got him on the wrist. Both of these teams getting up and down. You see Chris Silva tries to get the flop. I love the no call of Dew taking his time. And then look at the ball movement. Hase doing a nice job of getting there before the defense gets to set up. All of your quality basketball teams move the basketball from side to side, and they try to get out early and score some transition offense. It's a different South Carolina team in 2019. We mentioned it earlier, gaining health. They've lost 18 games to key players this year due to injuries. As Peter's out of control, and sometimes he'll do that, will be bailed out by Carter. Love it. Solid job right now defensively by the Gamecocks, which is helping their offense because they're trying to score before the defense of Mississippi State gets set up. Nearly stolen by Peters, an open look for Gravit. Yeah, he missed Lawson in the corner there. He needed to go one more. Would have had A.J. Lawson for a wide open three-pointer. Under 12 to go in a fast-moving first half here in Columbia. Mississippi State picked fourth in the SEC preseason poll. Off the glass and a strong finish for Quindary Weatherspoon. Slippery. That's how I'd describe his game when he goes to the cup. Quindary Weatherspoon so efficient both from the perimeter and getting into the teeth of the defense. I swear it's year 17 for him in Starkville. He's been there forever, and he just keeps getting better. Teardrop for Lawson. Well, it's this young man's first year, and he's been the most effective when it comes to putting up points. I think he reminds you a little bit of P.J. Dozier. Doesn't have the handle as well, but is a better scorer than P.J. Dozier. I like that comparison. There's Peters for three. And Mississippi State leading 22-19. Right, both teams running crisp and efficient offensive sets here in the early going. Kotsar rolls it in. Nice. Kotsar really had his coming out party on the road at Michigan when he had 16 points. That was really the turning point for South Carolina, and they still continued to carry that momentum into the Florida game. Yeah, tough non-conference schedule. Ooh. Virginia, Michigan, Wofford, Clemson. Peters feeling it, and he connects again, and when he gets hot, look out. Well, you mentioned tough non-conference schedule. <laughs> it's not getting any easier in the Southeastern Conference. Mississippi State, who had 19 threes against Clemson, as good as you'll find offensively. Perry a steal. And he gives it right back. Two on two, grab it, attacking. And he'll shoot a pair. Bulldogs lead is four on the road, halfway through our first half here in Columbia. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. And in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. You're watching the SEC on ESPN back in Columbia, South Carolina. The Gamecocks and Bulldogs of Mississippi State 25-21. MSU out in front of South Carolina. Great to have you with us. Damian Fishback, Roy Philpott, and Mississippi State, one of the more underrated teams in the country this year, and I think Ben Howland likes it that way, but their non-conference schedule, impressive. And they got a lot of quadrant one victories, which is important come March. Yeah, I think one of eight teams that have five-plus quad one or two wins in the non-conference schedule. So impressive, and we mentioned it before, the job that Coach Ben Howland has done everywhere that he's been. And look at that difference in non-conference this year. The St. Mary's at Dayton, one of the toughest places to play in the country. Clemson, a, a, a backyard brawl with, Clint, with Cincinnati that they won. And then Coach Mike Young and Walford, very impressive wins that they've had this year, Roy. And you go back to last season, Mississippi State got off to a great start for the non-conference schedule was Cupcake City, and that cost the Bulldogs come tournament time as they were a number one seed in the NIT, making a deep run. And, of course, the quad one wins look like this. Yeah. It matters where you play and who you're playing. 
Well, I'm sure a couple of people at home have said, what is he talking about, quad one, quad two? We don't know. Well, now you can see it right here. Home wins one through 30, away wins one through 75, neutral wins one through 50, which is important because in the SEC there are 11 teams in that one to 75 rank. A lot of opportunities for teams this year in the Southeastern Conference. Eight teams went to the dance last year from the league. That was a conference record, and right now probably six or seven according to the uh, current projections by Joe Lenardi. Slated to go, and of course, a lot of time between now and March. Sure. Grab it inside. Man, is he playing good basketball. Got a lot of confidence. A lot of confidence, a lot of swagger. Remember in that Final Four run, he was a huge part of it, right? We talk about Gravit, Dozier, Thornwell, Dwayne Notice. So there's some guys on this team that still understand what it takes to get to the next level. Nadu already with six inside, lost the handle. And a late whistle will put Abdul Adu at the stripe. Hase picks up his first. And Abdul Adu grew up playing soccer in Nigeria. 74% at the line this year. The fans don't like it, but that's reason why Mississippi State's so dangerous. They can hurt you inside, outside. They can slow you down or speed you up. Multiple ways and a lot of versatility. Our women's hoop Thursday night showcase has number one Notre Dame against number two Louisville at the Joyce Center. Last year, the Cardinals blew out Muffet McGraw's squad. Now the defending champs out for a bit of payback. 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Also, the ESPN app. What a season last year by Coach McGraw, right? More ACL tears than losses. And they won the title. <laughs> they won it. Unbelievable job. And be matched up against Coach Waltz and the Cardinals. Outstanding basketball season thus far. South Carolina back to work, 11 minutes in, and a traveling violation on Evan Henson, who just checked in. And, of course, if you follow Carolina sports, you know that Evan also plays for Will Muschamp's Gamecocks on the gridiron. Coach Muschamp doing an outstanding job continuing to rebuild this program. Of course, fans want him to get it to the next level. I think everybody wants a Southeastern Conference Championship, but there's a lot of people in the way. Madu got away with the travel. Campbell claims the rebound. Everybody wants to win now. Henson. <laughs> and a foul over the back will it's, go against 23 and White. It certainly means more, doesn't it? <laughs> there can only be one champion, though, Roy. Fun start in this one. Both teams shooting over 55%. Well, and you think about Mississippi State over the last five or six games, 48% from behind the three-point line. And so when you have size, when you have depth like that, uh, that, that makes it a, a very challenge to defend. We know Coach Frank Martin. His middle name is defense. But, but with this team, it's so hard because of the unselfishness by that man with the basketball of RP. Beautiful pass inside, and Weatherspoon took a tumble and got up with a little attitude. Lamar Peters in the last game, zero points, but six assists. And he has the ability to have those type of games, even though he scored almost 30 points a game in high school, because of the weapons that he surrounded himself with. Coach Ben Howlin has gotten him to buy in, and that's a reason for the success with Mississippi State. It looked as if Gravit got all ball, but there was contact with the body, and hence the foul as Lawson comes back in. A.J. Lawson actually the leading scorer for South Carolina this year in his freshman campaign. Do you think it was all ball, Roy? It looked like it was all ball, but there was contact downstairs. <laughs> so I'd vote for you. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Coach Sar, too strong. He, he has to give them something on that pass. For South Carolina to continue to compete in the SEC, he has to give them more. Beautiful ball movement for Mississippi State. Weatherspoon with a vertical jump. That is so tough. Because of his ability to accelerate, for him to stop and pop like that, Roy, that is a challenge, I'm telling you, as a player to try to guard. He really is one of the more athletic players in this conference, and he's just a sophomore. 
Timeout on the floor as we step aside. The lead is five. Back inside Colonial Life Arena, Damian Fishback, Roy Philpott. We've had two ties, five lead changes, and right now Mississippi State ranked 14th in the country with a five-point advantage. Well, Roy, I expected a UFC-type battle today, right? Two teams that are so tough. I thought it was going to be a, a backyard brawl, but offensively it's been smooth. It's been a phenomenal tip -off. You see the scoring uh, from Mississippi State. We, those weapons that we talked about, uh, South Carolina, though, I mentioned it before, I expect them at some point in this basketball game to change it up and go zone. I think Coach Ben Hallen does as well. They've been using more zone this year with four freshmen playing significant minutes for Frank Martin. So he's trying to do whatever he can to help out his guys defensively because that's his DNA. And that's so right. I think the more experience they get, the less they'll lean on it. But they'll go back between 2-3 and 3-2 zone pressure. A good bit tonight, and now half-court trapping pressure. I like it. Adu off to a fast start. Offensive foul. First chess move by Coach Frank Martin. So there was three-quarter court pressure, a 1-2-2 two, two that went back. It was going to go back into a zone. But how about Coach Sart? The wherewithal and the mindset, even after going up with the pump fake, to stay poised and give up his body. And another huge foul on Adu. Seven and a half to go in our first half. It's the SEC opener for Mississippi State. South Carolina comeback win at Florida on Saturday night as Lawson will have it put back in by Kozar. And that's the one thing that Coach Frank Martin said at practice yesterday and this morning, by the way. <laughs> He's been working them, is that he wants to make sure his guys rebound better. That's the characteristic of his teams that he's accustomed to having that this team hasn't done quite yet. I told you today after talking with Frank, I always feel better about life after sitting down with him for about 30 minutes. And I don't care if his team isn't playing well or if it's playing its best basketball in Frank Martin history in Columbia. He just has a way of spinning it to where you're like, oh, I never thought about it that way. That's right. That's right. Well, what high school coach, a couple of state championships as a head coach, I think six overall. And he told us a brutal story, too, on that touchdown pass play that we reviewed to Chris Silva. He ran it in high school. Worked to perfection. The officials called a late foul, waved off the basket, and then gave the other team free throws on the other end of That's the court, right. and he lost the game. <laughs> well, Saturday we'll have an afternoon ACC college basketball doubleheader for you over on ESPN. Number 12, North Carolina hosting Louisville at noon. And then number one, Duke, Florida State, 13th in the country, down in Tallahassee. That's a sonic blockbuster. Headed your way at 2 o'clock. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. And let the Zion Williamson hype continue <laughs> because he's been so much fun to watch this year. Yeah, it's much more than the freshman phenoms, though, for Duke. And Florida State will be ready. I promise you that. Duke is always on upset alert on the road in the ACC for the most part. That's right. Because they know they're going to get the opposition's best shot. And Perry inside, fouled on the floor. Speaking of Zion, he gave this dunk a 7 out of 10. What is he talking about? <laughs> what is he talking about, Fish? Well, listen, listen he, he could have grew up like I did, watching Dominique Wilkins. Dominique would have put it on the side of the hip, took it behind the head as well. Zion, we love it, but we want even more. That's right. Really? If you hadn't seen this guy, seriously, most exciting player in college basketball, hands down. He is much watch television. He's a freshman, and he looks like a grown man. He looks like he's been in the league for about five or six years. Second heaviest man in the NBA if he went right now. You see the highest-rated draft prospects. I've seen John Morant for Murray Ooh. State. He's legit. As Weatherspoon, a step back. We're seeing more step-back threes, and I think it's James Harden's fault because that's really what his <laughs> game is based on. But James Harden does three or four step backs without a bounce. You're seeing a lot of step backs, candidly, because South Carolina is staying in front. He talked about that in practice yesterday. He stopped practice. He said, if you're not going to stay in front of Lamar Peters and the Weatherspoon brothers and show more courage than that, we're going to lose the basketball game. They're displaying courage right now. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, 
Holman, hacked from behind. That'll go against Campbell, and that's his first. So physical. Even Campbell said, he said that's the biggest difference that he's experienced going from the Big East to the SEC. He said, this league is so physical defensively. It's so challenging. And, and that's what South Carolina is displaying right now tonight. Frank Martin shaking his head in disbelief. He told us today, he goes, you know what? I don't care if the guy sitting over there watching the game tonight doesn't like how I act or what I do. I don't care if somebody watching on television thinks I'm losing my mind. I care about making these guys on the court grown men. Well, and that's why so many people, especially players, were happy for Coach Frank Martin when he made his run to the Final Four because he does it the right way with passion. Peters almost took a tumble. Yeah, Lamar Peters showing some passion himself, but, you know, he gets on guys extremely hard. But he said that when they made the Final Four run, he thinks parents need to do more of that. This millennial generation, microwave generation that wants it yesterday, it's okay to tell them no every once in a while. I wanted it yesterday. I'm not a millennial. <laughs> but I'm with you. Frank's got the pinstripes on tonight, which is ultra stylish. Coats are. Rebounded by Silva, and Holman, a nice job defensively in traffic. Gamecocks won for their last eight from the floor. High screen for Carter, got away with a push off. And Silva skies for the rebound. Campbell launches from distance and draws the contact from Peters. And Lamar Peters didn't like that whistle. That's a good, healthy conversation there between official and Peters, right? Uh, well, I, I had the last game against BYU, and he ended up getting a technical foul because he was speaking to the officials too much. Now, for young players on the collegiate level, you're not James Harden, you're not LeBron James. You're not Steph Curry, so you can't afford to talk to the officials on this level like those guys can. There was a fingernail involved somewhere in there. It wasn't much. Listen, he's got a right to be upset on that call, but again, you can't control it. You allow the coaches to control that for you. No, Peters, a brief conversation with his head coach, Ben Howland. Talking to Ben today, I told him a couple of times, hey, this team reminds me a little bit of your final four teams that you had at UCLA. And he had none of it. He didn't want to hear that. He didn't want me to say it, I don't think. <laughs> he said, it's, we're just trying to get in. <laughs> right. And I think he likes his spot under the radar for the most part so far. Tied at 30. Holman launches. And that's his spot. And that's a sweet-looking shot. Well, and the shot that they're going to see if they stay in that one, two, one, one, three-quarter court pressure. And so they're going to have to find the shooters. So many weapons for Mississippi State. How about the backdoor cut by Lawson? Stripped at the rim, and Weatherspoon lost it out of bounds. Eric Holman can go off at any point in time, as can his team. Well, he's continued to improve every year. The Orangeboro, Kentucky native playing like a first class. And some scouts think first-round pick. Peters a steal. Quindary Weatherspoon against Silva. And Weatherspoon wins that matchup. Was the slippery adjective spot on? Are I you think kidding so. me? Yeah. He made a way out of no way. Now Weatherspoon can score at all three levels. Swatted away by Holman. It'll stay with Carolina. Under four to play. Lead is five for MSU. As a rising star. Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. But the Seminoles are issuing a no fly zone in Tallahassee. Number one, Duke. Number 13, Florida State. Saturday at 2 on ESPN. All Zion all the time. It's going to be a lot of fun down in Tallahassee. Back in Columbia, the lead is five. Damian Fishback, Roy Philpot, 14th ranked Mississippi State with the early advantage. Gamecocks, meanwhile, Fish have missed their last six shots in this one well and you're going to go through scoring droughts but what is critical about any of your quality teams is that your defense has to hold down the fort while you're going through that drought and so 
for Coach Frank Martin in South Carolina. Their defense has to remain steady until they get going offensively again. Bulldogs four for their first eight from three-point range as Holman nearly stole that pass. So good to see Eric Holman healthy. You know, he, he, throughout his career, he has continued to battle injuries, and you can see from his athleticism, uh, you can see by the way he runs the floor, just by his overall confidence, and he enjoys playing the game even more uh, that he is 100% now. Holman played a little baseball in high school, had a nasty curveball. That's right. We got him one time to actually throw a basketball like a curve in baseball, and he could do it. Hase. Rebounded. How about that tip by Nick Weatherspoon? Right. And Peters hit the deck. Roy, you know what's interesting? And Hassani Gravitz upset with himself. In practice, Coach Frank Martin said something simple yesterday, but it was profound to me. He said, with Lamar Peters, if you reach or lunge, you're going to get into trouble. If you just simply guard him, he'll actually run himself into trouble. Mississippi State now in the bonus as Peters missed the first free throw. Gamecocks need some offense, trying to close out this first half strong. Interesting start in the SEC tonight. Tennessee a big road win at Missouri. As Hase's three-pointer comes up well short. And a foul against Mississippi State. Well, so Chris Silva's made the change. You know, Chris Silva at the beginning of the year, Coach Frank Martin said that he put too much pressure on him. You know, to he was running plays for him. He was trying to get sets, have him truly lead this team in a way that Coach said Chris Silva wasn't he wasn't comfortable with. He finally took the pressure off, allowed him to rebound, allowed him to find it just within the parameters of his offense, and now he's excelling. Silva down low. Back to South Carolina, under three to play. Nice set this time. You see Chris Silva actually runs up like he's going to set a, a back screen for Hase, but he slips the screen, and then Eric Holman doesn't communicate with the freshman Perry, and that allows the wide open layup at the rim. 11th dunk of the season for number 30 in white, Chris Silva. Preseason All-SEC pick. Campbell off the screen, and a long two. It's a different South Carolina team. It is. <laughs> Crowd comes to life. Swatted from behind by Lawson, but contact as he picks up the personal. That's his first. Bulldogs back at the line. Mississippi State coming off an impressive blowout win against BYU back on December 29th. There's Weatherspoon. 86% at the line this year. Has one more coming. Don't forget about our next NBA Wednesday. This is star set a doubleheader. Bucks and Rockets. Giannis and the Bucks in Houston to take on James Harden at 8 Eastern. And the Pistons and the Lakers at 10.30. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN. Also, the ESPN app. The, the Rockets have kind of figured themselves out. James Harden has figured himself <laughs> out. I mean, he's getting 40 a night for the last two and a half weeks. He said, Chris Paul, just get here whenever you can. I got this covered. Rockets got something to prove this year after what happened against Golden State in the Western Conference Finals a year ago. Perry left open. Rebounded by Campbell. Gamecocks pressing. Outstanding hustle by Silva. Thirty-seven, thirty-six. Keep an eye on that matchup. The freshman Perry against Chris Silva. Grab it, left open. Loves that spot. Loves it. 
South Carolina back out in front. 39-37, 1.24 to go. Big three-pointer by Gravit, 39-37, Carolina. Roy, see what happened there was Lamar Peters had the help on the screen for Chris Silva. Oftentimes, when you're the star player on the team, the shot's not always going to come to you. But on that particular play, simply because Lamar Peters did his job, which was helping the young freshman Perry, it allowed Hassani Gravit to get open for that jump shot. Fun start in Columbia. Weatherspoon left open. Fires that one short. Nice job of Hase keeping his line of verticality, jumping straight up and straight down. And a timeout will be called by Frank Martin's club. Well, a good start for South Carolina off their conference opening victory on the road at Florida on Saturday night. And don't let the 6-7 and seven record fool you. The injuries have been significant. We mentioned it earlier, 18 games lost by three different players who all play significant minutes for this Carolina team. And so you try to bounce back from that, not easy to do. Well, so obviously we see Coach are a couple of concussions uh, or missed two games because of the concussions. T.J. Moss, sprained ankle, Manaya out for the season right now uh, because of the right knee. But you still have a group of freshmen that are coming in as well. So when you take out those missing players, Freshmen that haven't done this before for Coach Frank Martin. Keyshawn Bryant was dealing with migraines, and so he missed a lot of practice time. Uh, just a completely different di different team. That's Justin Maniah right there. What does he bring back? The versatility, the experience. This is not a 6-7 and seven basketball team right now. And they hope Maniah can get back sooner rather than later. Carolina in the midst of a 9-2 run to try to close out this first half as Perry just picked up his second. Manaya gives you that versatility to be able to guard different players on the court. And losing him right before that loss to Wofford here, I think was a really big deal. Stats an executive for the New York Mets. He's getting closer, and they hope to get him back as soon as possible. Well, you think about for the, for the SEC this year, a team like South Carolina, because of their strength of schedule, when you deal with the non-conference, when you play at Michigan, Virginia, Clemson, et cetera, and you talk about 11 opportunities for top 75 net victories, <laughs> you get on a run, you just see what happens. You take it one game at a time. A four-point advantage for South Carolina here at home. Trapping, 3-2 pressure now out of that zone. Peters. Second point blank miss for Weatherspoon. Excellent and the rebound defense. corralled by Silva. That was excellent. Because of the weapons, right? You had Peters that tried to get off a shot, a three-point shooter in Holman, a great finisher in Weatherspoon, and they defended it all. A one-second differential between game and shot clock. And South Carolina building on the positive mojo from that comeback win at Florida. Here's Campbell. Got to hurry. Attacking. And a first half comes to a close. South Carolina ends the first 20 minutes on an 11-2 run. 7-0 to end this first half officially. 41-37, our halftime score. Coming up after these commercial messages, stay tuned for the halftime report. In Columbia, Gamecocks with a four-point lead over number 14, Mississippi State. Very entertaining first half in the books. Carolina ended that first half in the midst of an 11-2 scoring run. Damian Fishback, Roy Philpott. It was a lot of fun the first 20 minutes. Yeah, it was exciting basketball. We thought about 
telling you there was going to be a nice defensive matchup. I'm glad we didn't do that. Right. right. <laughs> Offensively, both of these teams really shined in the first half, as proficient as I've seen both of these teams this year. Mississippi State getting the bulk of their damage done in the paint. South Carolina in transition and also with a three-point shot. They were impressive. Yeah, what impressed me the most is simply the way they did it, right? Got the basketball inside, and when they did that, it just continued to break down South Carolina's defense. One of the reasons why Coach Frank Martin went to the zone defense, frankly, in the first half. And when they went to that zone defense, it allowed them to manufacture points in transition. That's right, 10 points off of South Carolina's turnovers. Keyshawn Bryant there off of the glass with a nice touch. South Carolina playing with much more confidence, much more speed and tempo, and it's one of the reasons why they have a first-half lead. So the Gamecocks shooting just 43% in the first 20 minutes, but the four three balls and also seven of nine at the line to help key that late run. You can feel this team gaining confidence after that win at Florida on Saturday. Well, look how far out their offense is pushed right now, Roy. Here's a steal. Bryant. And Lawson was thinking about showtime. He, he was. He was. But I don't think Coach Frank Martin minds that. And that's just freshmen being freshmen, right, even this far into the season. Uh, but, but what I saw and impressed me is – they're slowly but surely, like Alabama's defense typically does, starting to wear down Mississippi State. Coats are on the offensive glass. Sweat the putback. And here they come. Mississippi State just one loss this season. That came against Arizona State as Weatherspoon called for the offensive foul. And how about that position by Silva? Well, it's, it's, it's a call that can go either way. Coach Ben Howlin doesn't love the call. And frankly, I think Silva probably was sliding a little bit. A tough break on the road for Mississippi State. With that being said, Mississippi State should be accustomed to this. We talked about it at the outset, the win over Dayton early in this season. But right now, South Carolina playing with the team that's on a mission. Silva to Bryant. Nick Weatherspoon attacking. He'll shoot two. Nick Weatherspoon upset with himself because he didn't finish the three-point play. But trust me, and Florida saw it in the previous game versus South Carolina, the foul against Chris Silva is much more important than getting a foul. Nine points already for the sophomore Nick Weatherspoon. And we mentioned it earlier, Fish, he has altered his shot this year, changing the position of his thumb on his offhand. Sure. Well, and, and obviously it's... I used to it's shoot it like this with my thumb, man. Like this. I never throw it out to the left and the right, but now I take my thumb out and I... Have more guys, and it helps me get my arc on my shot and have a more accurate. Shooting 52% from deep, so. Impressive. It's working. <laughs> and that pass sails out of bounds as Carolina turns it over. Yeah, they're starting to look like freshmen a little bit. Same thing that Coach Martin, as you see him grabbing his forehead, thought that he saw uh, with, with Mike White's freshman, right? Uh, Noah Locke and, and, and company at Florida. Screen for Peters. He gets hot. Look out. We saw that at times in our first 20 minutes. He's got nine points on three triples. Coach a strong finish. We've got a ball game. we got a ball game. So, so now you see that South Carolina's going inside. I wonder before they go back to this zone if Mississippi State tries to take advantage of their split foot speed. And they do have foot speed versus South Carolina. How about that pass from Peters to Holman? Beautiful. Peters averaging over six assists per game, one of the best figures in the SEC. As we step aside, we're tied at 45. Well, Lamar Peters, a guy who's put up eight threes before this year, He's saying, you can't go behind the screen on me, Campbell. 
That's nothing but nylon, baby. Welcome back to Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile. Tied at 45, a fun start to the SEC opener for number 14, Mississippi State. Damian Fishback, Roy Philpott, Ben Hallen talking things over. After the timeout called by Frank Martin. Well, listen, these are the games that you want to win if you're trying to compete for an SEC championship. And when I spoke with Coach Ben Hallen before the last game over at BYU, he talked about not only getting into the tournament but playing for seeding. Well, if you want to get a higher seed, he said it's very important to try to get one through three. With multiple Final Fours, he's a coach that knows how to get there. And so if you want to get that type of seeding, these are the games that you have to really scratch and claw to try to win. We got a pair of Final Four coaches. I love the question you asked Frank Martin earlier today. How has life changed since you became a coach that's led a team to a Final Four? Coach our baseline, Carolina back in front. Beautiful. Again, Chris Silva, almost a decoy for the defense of Mississippi State. He drew four players on that pass. Martin's response was, hey, we're getting in it deeper with better recruits because now they know I can lead a team to a Final Four. But I think he was most impressed with his fellow colleagues, his fellow coaches. That's right. Identifying him now as reaching the Final Four. He even got invited to the secret breakfast <laughs> in the Final Four last year as Bryant connects. And that breakfast consists of only coaches that have taken their programs to the Final Four. Special stuff is Peters. Can't get another dime. Really like the talent of Keyshawn Bryant. Well, he has a chance to be special. And look at the penetration by A.J. Lawson, able to drive, draw, and then dish to Keyshawn Bryant. That's easy like Sunday morning. You can stop, step out there and knock that down all day long. Frank said he's just scratching the surface. Adu, wide open, finished. Nice poise. The experience, probably the number one caveat that Mississippi State brings back. You see that in a lot of the teams in the SEC at the upper echelon, in Tennessee and Auburn as well. As a player, if you're talking about a freshman, you're number one, South Carolina playing four freshmen this year. How long does it take? to really get acclimated to the game. I think Coach Beheim said it the best. For a different freshman, it takes a different amount of time. And I imagine playing under Coach Frank Martin, it certainly varies for how much time it, it takes you to get used to that. Bryant trying to make Sports Center top 10. Holman! And a late whistle. Eric Holman will shoot two. Wow. Well, South Carolina, young team, we're talking about it. Off of the missed dunk. What does that allow? A foul on Chris Silva. You're watching the SEC on ESPN back in Columbia. 50 to 47, our score. South Carolina out in front of number 14, Mississippi State. He's Damian Fishback. I'm Roy Philpot. And a brand new segment here for you. Fish facts for the former <laughs> SEC star as we give you the facts as only Damian Fishback can. Yeah, you know, when you watch college basketball, there's a lot of opinions, but we're going to give you some facts. Tennessee is the best team in the SEC, Roy. Fact. All right, well, how about this one? SEC will have seven teams in the NCAA tournament. There were eight last year, seven this year. That's a fact. Thank you very much. I thought you were going to hesitate on me a little bit. The SEC resurgence started with South Carolina. Fact, in the Final Four two years ago, a huge run by a team not named Kentucky. It helped set the tone for last season and those eight teams punching their ticket. Thank you very much. A lot of people forget about that. They talked about it, uh, Farnham and Tom Hart, in the previous game. The, the change of the national perception started with the Dwayne Notice and Darius Thornwell. Remember when they were able to dominate Duke in that basketball game, ran into a buzzsaw against Gonzaga? I mean, 
when you when you look at the SEC, it was always Kentucky and Florida, especially when Billy Donovan was there. But you look at what they did with the program record and wins, and then their trip to the Final Four said to the rest of the country, there's more than just Florida and Kentucky in the SEC. Can I say it one more time? I'm waiting on you. Fact. <laughs> just call me Stephen A. Philpott. <laughs> Weatherspoon off the bounce. Crafty move in the basket. You. Mid-range specialist. One of the best mid-range jump shots I've seen in the country. And a blocking foul will be called against Weatherspoon as Silva was able to grab that pass, almost like a tight end. Well, the reason he's able to get out there and receive that pass is because of his ability to run the floor as a big. That's so undervalued. You look at Kyle Anderson. Uh, or Cal Alexander, I'm sorry, at Tennessee. He does a phenomenal job. You look at Chris Silver here. So many big guys fail to do that. Chased down by Coach R. Campbell left open for three. South Carolina back in front. Crowd's trying. <laughs> They're trying. Columbia, South Carolina, you can do better. Nine to shoot. Weatherspoon spotted, Perry open. And a foul results in two free throws. Nothing comes easy. And that's what you expect from South Carolina. When they made the run to the Final Four, the defense was phenomenal. They're now beginning to get back to that, but Mississippi State, they are so good and so efficient offensively. Third foul on Silva, one more coming for Perry. Reminder about ESPN Plus, home to over 2,500 college basketball games this season, plus UFC, international soccer, and exclusive originals like 30 for 30. Sign up now, download the ESPN app, or visit ESPNplus.com. Now that's where millennials and I get along right you can get everything on the app so everything the is there. twitter and instagram and snapchat turn on the espn app grab it spins it in this game has had a great energy and a fantastic pace tonight The dump off. Perry is short. That's where the young fella has to grow up. Kotsar hit the deck hard, but it's okay. You talk about the tempo and the pace that's been had. The one thing that Mississippi State has not done is go inside as much as I think they can. South Carolina's got two bigs. They got Hase as well, but if you can get Coltsart or Silva in foul trouble, you change the entire complexion of this basketball game. Campbell rejected by Adu. Five to shoot. Well, Asani Gravitt coming off of 22 points, a huge piece in Florida. That's the big difference that I see from the Gamecocks. The Gamecocks right now are not allowing the defense to set up. That's, a, that's what they changed in that Final Four run. They started playing faster. You can play fast, but under control. If the defense is not set up, that's your chance to score. Two shots coming for Hase. So Holman picks up his second. Hase. Go ahead. Hase, one of the players that Coach Frank Martin absolutely loves. And the reason why is because he doesn't have a, a body type or a type of athleticism that's going to floor you. But what he brings to the game and his ability to think the game, uh, to play every single possession, not take plays off, is actually something that beguiles opponents often. You don't think he can shoot like that, or, or you don't think he's as quick or mobile as he is, but he is a guy that if you sleep on him, will continue to hurt you. And the best free throw shooter. Something to be said about that. No doubt about it. 
If only you could have been better at the line. Nope. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> South Carolina by five, trying to improve to 2-0 and in the SEC. Here's Woodard. Rebounded by Kozar. This is so good to see. I wanted to know what the depth of Mississippi State would do on the road in this type of environment. Coach are with authority. The lead swells to seven, and a timeout will be called by Ben Hallett. We can't sing, but you know the song by Eminem. It's called Guess Who's Back, Back Again. And Mike Coatsard is trying to let the nation know that the Gamecocks just might be back. Boys, Duke has a rising star. Hold up, let me get up in it now. I'm here to win it now. But the Seminoles are issuing a no-fly zone in Tallahassee. Number one, Duke. Number 13, Florida State. Saturday at 2 on ESPN. Now the countdown is on. And give me the dunk one more time, Fish. I need the dunk one more time. <laughs> if you have not seen Zion Williamson play, you have got to turn it on. Listen, the athleticism, the size, the mobility, and grace put together like something you have yet to see. How about some love for Mike Kosar as well just moments ago? Now, come on, man. I, I like to jump, but we can't set Mike Kosar up like that. We're we going to set him up like that after Zion Williams. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Kosar, 16 points tonight. That ties his career high, Fish, as Holman's left open, and a big triple out of the timeout. They can shoot you out and into a game. Mississippi State exhilarating from behind the three-point line of late. Coats are a sneaky 16 points tonight off the Carolina bench. Grab it launches and connects. Grab it in double figures with 11. Well, because of Colt Sart's ability to score now, he's able to draw the defense. And when they score, it allows South Carolina to get back into that zone that slowed the Bulldogs down a little bit. Holman off the mark. Loss in the rebound. Brian steps into a triple. I like that shot. And Peters too excited on that pass. Well, you see how because of the job of, of Coltsart driving and drawing, it gets Tyson Carter out of position a little bit. His hands were down. Hassani grabbed it, made him pay from behind the three-point line. They've got pieces here in South Carolina, and those pieces are now healthy and cohesive. I would argue one of the bigger upsets in college basketball this past weekend with that comeback win at Florida. You back it up with a win against nationally ranked Mississippi State. There'll be a lot of people talking about this program the next couple of weeks. Without question. Weatherspoon a strong finish. The difference, though, this Mississippi State team down against Arizona State, made a game out of it. Down against Dayton, came back and win. They've been able to come back from deficits throughout this season. Two misses for Gravit. Bulldogs clear and now with a chance to maybe make it a one possession game. And a foul inside on Hase, that's his second. So what I'm seeing now is the freshness of Mississippi State playing eight, nine guys. And so when you play Mississippi State, you've got Woodard on the sideline. You've got Reggie Perry that comes into the basketball game, Tyson Carter. They have quality depth that continues to get better. Are you surprised by what we're seeing right now with this Gamecock team? Not at all. Peters. We'll shoot two. Now, frankly, I will be surprised if the Gamecocks are able to finish the job. And, and the reason why is because I believe Mississippi State is that good. I believe for 40 minutes of play, when you have to deal with the ball handling and ability to distribute the basketball like Lamar Peters and a guy who can knock down eight threes, when you have the Weatherspoon brothers, 
Padere Weatherspoon, two-time SEC player or All-SEC team. Nick Weatherspoon, his motor, they just have so much over 40 minutes of play. I don't think that South Carolina, frankly, can match that for 40 minutes with their limited depth right now. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Peters, one of two at the line. I like it when you're right. I also like it when you're wrong sometimes, too. <laughs> no offense. None taken, partner. None taken. Mississippi State, 10 of 17 at the line. And here's a steal. Now, Reggie Perry, a good-looking freshman. Number one in black will set the high ball screen. Weatherspoon blocked from behind by Bryant. It'll stay with the Bulldogs. And so what I'm seeing now, Mississippi State is accustomed to trying to get it quick offensively. They got it quicker against BYU. You're not going to get it as quick against South Carolina. When they play defense, you're going to have to be more patient in the half court. I like that analysis as Weatherspoon. We'll skip it over to his younger brother. Now back to big brother who connects. There it is. So you change sides of the floor one time and you get Keyshawn Bryant, a, a, a freshman that's lost a little bit defensively. Bryant on the other end makes good. Approaching nine to play, it's a three-point contest. Perry goes to work. Offensive foul, and Kozar was ready and waiting. Excellent call that time. The Perry is an aggressive freshman, right? He's got a body like a senior, an NBA player already. He doesn't have to do that. I love him being aggressive, but that's probably the second or third time I've seen that in the last couple of games for him. He just needs to go straight up and over Mike Kozar on that play. Last three ball games between these two programs have been extremely competitive. This one no different. Peters sizes another one up, top of the key. A fresh 30. Peters again. Count it. We're tied at 63. Picasso type pass that time by Quindary Weatherspoon. This is the different level of play we're seeing in this conference the last couple of seasons. Oh. It's a night and day difference, really. Off the bounce, Campbell. Coats are. Hase. Can they make it four? No. One on two, Weatherspoon out of control. What a frantic pace. So many players flopping, I can't tell if it's a foul or not. <laughs> and Frank Martin barking out instructions. He's starting to get lathered up over there. For three, Hase. Carolina back in front. What are we going to see next, big man? They've stayed in the zone defense. I like the timeout being called right now. Felipe Hase, the sophomore, 6'9", 253 pounds. We talked about him. May not be the best looking player from a body built, but that shot is oh so smooth. by three, 723 to go back in Columbia. The Weatherspoon brothers have combined for 27 points tonight. Natives of Canton, Mississippi, and each one of them contributed to a state championship at Belma Jackson High School, Quindary. In his final season with the Bulldogs, Nick in just his second campaign, and both displaying how proud they are of their hometown. As you see, the dad, Tommy, mom is Sharon, basketball family and representing Canton, Mississippi. <laughs> well, well, you love it. I love it. Listen, they talked about the challenge in coming out of Canton, Mississippi. Had to actually move schools about 30 minutes away just to get away from some of the crime and poverty. They gave so many thanks to their parents and, and, and frankly, still have a younger brother, Brandon. Who's pretty good, right? Who's really good as well. So we'll see if they get a third Weatherspoon 
to Humphrey Coliseum. Out of the timeout, another three ball for Eric Holman. It's the second time we've seen that play in our second half. Well, they're tough to zone because they have so many guys who can knock down the three. Both Weatherspoon brothers, Tyson Carter, as well as Eric Holman. I think that's one of the aspects that makes Mississippi State so dangerous come tournament time. As Campbell appears to be shaken up. We'll take a look at that right foot. Five ties, eight lead changes so far tonight, Fish. Welcome to conference play. Welcome to 2019. <laughs> it's been beautiful. You hope for Campbell he didn't re-injure that ankle that he injured earlier in the season. Five to shoot for Silva. Quindary Weatherspoon, 15 points. Three rebounds this evening. And Nick, numeral zero in black with 12. Well, this says something to me about the guards for South Carolina because I think Mississippi State has one of the better backcourts in the country. That's a bold statement. Grab it. He's got 13. I'm with you on the SEC, but in the entire nation, you like this backcourt as much as anybody. One of the better backcourts. That's right. I like putting you on the spot. Because of their depth, because of their versatility, and their efficiency. He checked for Holman. Weatherspoon. Rebound number four and two free throws coming up. I absolutely love his game. He can get it any way you want him to. He can get it via the offensive rebound. He can get in the passing lane. He gets steals, get out on the break. He can take you to the basket. He can post up a little bit and obviously has the ability to knock down a three-point shot. That was the third foul on Bryant. Don't forget coming up on Sports Center later tonight after college basketball at 11 o'clock with Bucci and Anderson. Concerns about Zion Williamson perhaps in the NBA. I want your thoughts there. Plus. The NFL's coaching carousel, Cliff Kingsbury now leading the Arizona Cardinals. What does that mean for Josh Rosen plus an NFL preview? Sports Center at 11 Eastern on the ESPN, the ESPN app. I've got no concerns on Zion, by the way. <laughs> well, the, the question will be when he he's facing on a nightly basis guys that are more similar in his size and his athleticism. You've got greater bigs on a, on a daily basis. Will he be able to develop from the perimeter, right? Will he be able to knock down that jump shot? Uh, I think he will when he's doing nothing but working on that jump shot every day. Silva left open. Hit a three-pointer in the first half. Could not connect there. Zion's going to be just fine with the shot. He works too hard for that not to be the case. A little stutter step by Holman who got a friendly bounce. And a friendly no call. I think that stutter step was a travel. Fortunate for Mississippi State to get them the lead again. He's got 17 to lead all scores. Approaching five to play. Mm, big shot. Now, my question for Mississippi State now is, you're a one-point game on the road. Can you get to the rim? Holman, how about a triple instead? Don't need to. Do not need to have the same swagger that Tennessee had earlier where well, they're now beginning to relish in playing on the road. They like being hunted right now. And Coach Frank Martin livid with his young freshman. Eric Coleman with 20 points. He's 5 of 7 from downtown Fish. Well, you mentioned how about a triple, but where did that triple come from? From taking the basketball inside of the paint. You have to get it into that paint area, whether it's via the drive, whether it's via a post-up. And then once you do that, it allows for better three-point shots. And when you give Mississippi State good looks, they make you pay the price. Gamecocks have won their last two games. Mississippi State has won their last nine. And 16 in the second half tonight for Eric Holman, who, like many of his teammates, can go off at any point. Well, he went off last game, 28 points versus BYU. And, and I think the young fella has a quality upside. He talked about he went home over the holidays, and he said when he goes home, people just show up to his house. I said, wait till you get to the next level. They're really going to be popping up. Silva pops that one in to make it a two-point contest. Well, Holman, I think, is that prototypical stretch four. He can shoot it. He leads the team in blocks with 31 this year, Fish. 
He's got to show that he can guard at the next level. That'll be key. Peters in traffic. A blocking foul. And if that's Silva, that's his fourth. And it is. So a big call there. Here we go. You watch it at home. You be the official. That's a tough call. It's such a tough call. I think that Lamar Peters didn't move to the side of Chris Silva. He's on the road. So if you're a South Carolina fan, obviously you want that to be a charge. But Mississippi State, I'm sure you're thinking it was a clear blocking foul. Roy, you got quiet on me. Come on now. The world's listening. What's the call? It's a bang-bang play. <laughs> And I'm going to leave it at that. Whenever it starts out, it's a bang, bang play. <laughs> you know I'm sitting on the fence. That's like when somebody, how's the weather? They have absolutely nothing to talk about. <laughs> it's a bang, bang play. Silva will stay on the court with the four personals. He's got 11 points tonight. Critical moment in this game right here, approaching four to play. Bryant blocked by Adu. And the freshman gets it back. And look at Abdul Adu Sky for the rebound. He's critical. He's the guy that doesn't get the credit. We talk about the Weatherspoon brothers and Holman and Tyson Carter off of the bench and Peters. Adu is a pillar for this Mississippi State basketball team. Ben Howland said he's one of the unsung heroes for this team this year. When Peters gets that look in his eye, you feel like something's getting ready to happen. <laughs> Most of the time it's good, sometimes it isn't. How about that by Hassani Gravit? Gravit. Inside. Yes, sir. I like that young fella. Not only the basket, but his fight to help get the rebound before that. Crowd on its feet. And a one-point game. And a timeout will be called by Mississippi State. We'll step aside, 316 to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. And in part by Papa John's new Papa Rewards program. Earn points five times faster. Back in the state capitol here in South Carolina. One point contest. Damian Fishback, Roy Philpott. Gamecocks no stranger to these kinds of games this year. Let's go back in time just 72 hours ago down to Gainesville, Florida. And you want to talk about one of the best plays we've seen this season. Hase to Silva. The touchdown toss to lead South Carolina to come back win in the second half, Fish. So often plays like this change the entire complexion of a season. More confidence, more swag, or better demeanor when they were at practice. And more than anything, I think the Gamecocks are now beginning to believe. And belief is a very powerful emotion, right? Without question. Like Neo on the Matrix. And right now, if you're in this type of situation, for South Carolina, all you want to do is be close, and that's exactly where they are right now. But I also think it's a tremendous test for Mississippi State. Did you just slip in a Matrix reference right there? Don't tell anybody. Back to live action. Chris Silva is 19th career double-double already. Peters, a quick trigger. That's him. That's what he wants to do. If, if he makes that shot we're talking about, he has ice water in his veins. I don't mind that shot. Meanwhile, Mississippi State out of timeout. South Carolina with one remaining. Bulldogs in the bonus. Silva. And Adu taps it to Weatherspoon. How many rebounds has he secured for Mississippi State? And I have to correct myself. I talked about the quality depth. How about the bench points of South Carolina? Complete domination tonight. And the bench of Mississippi State, non-existent. Outscoring. The Bulldogs are the Gamecocks 26 to 2 with their reserves. Here's Peters. Swatted away by Silva for the shoot. Yeah, he's upset with himself. He wanted to Bill Russell just catch that one. Keep it in bounds. That ever happened to you playing at Auburn? 
Uh, I can't say that I caught it for sure. But I don't think anyone caught mine. I would have gave it up. I was unselfish, boy. I know. Oh, that's too good. My Holman with that 6'10 frame got a good look. Approaching two minutes to play. Gamecocks back to work. Silva. Coats are count it. And a chance for three. For young players at home, never underestimate the moving without the basketball. Holman turns his head. Quindary Weatherspoon doesn't come over and help. And the unselfishness and nice passing ability of Chris Silva allows a chance for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. A career-high 19 for Mike Kotsar. And listen to this crowd. Weatherspoon, the elbow J. Now that's what he does. When the game's on the line, forget all the other players in that black jersey and watch for Quindary Weatherspoon to perform. Eight ties, ten lead changes so far. What appears to be the game of the night in the SEC. Grab it, quick trigger. I like the double team that time. Mississippi State said we're not going to allow Chris Silva to beat us. Gamecocks in their man-to-man -man defense. This is all cute. Out of the screen, attacking, rejected. Coats are clears. Outstanding job defensively. Less than a minute to play if you're Carolina. Who do you try to isolate here? Who do you try to spring free? Well, listen, I, I'm still going back to Chris Silva. He needs to just be, be prepared for the double team. Campbell with an opening. Silva on the offensive glass. No foul. The shot clock is off. We're tied at 75. Wow. Tough break. And a chance to steal one on the road right here for Mississippi State. I do not let Weatherspoon touch the basketball. It looks like Lamar Peters wants this one, though. There he goes. Peters. Can't connect. Coach Sar clears. Here comes Carolina. Grab it at the buzzer. Overtime. I thought that was going in for a moment. <laughs> wow. Outstanding job defensively. Gets an incredible look at the basket and comes up, oh, just a tad bit. Just a tad bit short. In and out. Free basketball headed your way. Our first overtime period. We are tied at 75. Don't go anywhere. Twelve and one Mississippi State, ranked fourteenth in the country. Will be taken to overtime by six and seven South Carolina. The Gamecocks trying to improve to two and zero in the conference. Damian Fishback, Roy Philpot, welcome to the SEC. And you're telling me during the break, you think a game like this is really great for a team like Mississippi State? Sure, because there's going to be a time whether it's in the NCAA tournament, which they will play in this year. Uh, or or any game later on in conference play where they need to know who the guy is. When we talked about Lamar Peters and his ability to score, Eric Holman, the Weatherspoon brothers, Quindary Weatherspoon has proven when the game is on the line, he's made probably three or four game-winning shots. He's the guy that I think the basketball has to go to. I think they'll learn from that situation and find a way to get the basketball in his hands from here on out. We thought we were going to get a competitive game. We thought it would probably be more defense-oriented. And yet here we are, two explosive teams getting after each other to start 2019. Lawson. 
And the first possession in OT. Gamecocks come up empty. And Coach Frank Martin right now is living with the officiating crew. He feels like they've been missing calls down the stretch for his guys. Bounce pass to Nick Weatherspoon. Stop and pop all <laughs> night. And both coaches begging for calls. Nick Weatherspoon, I'm going to say outside of Grant Williams, one of the best mid-range jump shooters in the SEC. And it's a lost start across college basketball, is it not? Free throws coming for Kotsar. A little sarcastic applause by the fans here. It's already been a career night for Mike Kotsar. He's poured in 19 points. 8 of 16 from the floor as Holman just picked up his third. And coming up Saturday afternoon, an ACC college basketball doubleheader for you over on ESPN, Louisville, North Carolina. Tar Heels ranked 12th in the country, the number one Duke on the road in Tallahassee to tangle with number 13, Florida State. Sonic Blockbuster headed your way Saturday. Doubleheader inside the rough and rugged ACC. And, of course, both games also on the app. And we're tied at 77. The steal by Kotsar, who's doing everything tonight. Does it feel like one side or the other has a little momentum on its side right now? Not right now, trying to find himself with Silva on the sideline, actually. He's got four personals. The rebound cleared by Holman. Let's see if Mississippi State, well, they can. South Carolina has stayed in this zone, and it's detoured Mississippi State from going to the rim. Nine ties, 11 lead changes. We're in overtime in Columbia. Weatherspoon tosses up an air ball. What the Gamecocks are known for, even when they made that run to the Final Four, is they're not going to allow you to do what you want to do. And so with the zone, they're deterring Mississippi State from going inside, and then they're running them off the three-point line. A incredible contest that time on Nick Weatherspoon. And we've seen at times some of that old school defense by South Carolina. Good looking jumper by the freshman, A.J. Lawson. That was the help of Abdul Adu, but he was too concerned of trying to hold tight to Chris Silva. Just four points tonight for Lawson. He's averaged 13 in his first campaign here in Columbia. Holman, Adu. Too easy. That's how you work the zone. That's how you get inside defensively. You have to be relentless, like chopping down a tree. You just don't stop until you get into the paint area. Grab it out of control, a late whistle. The better the defense is, the more you have to move the basketball. You see that curl? That's Abdul Adu there. He has to get out and guard Lawson. And then you see the movement without the basketball again with Holman and Adu with a nice finish on the interior. Both teams now getting accustomed to the defense of one another and being more judicious on the, on the offensive end. And you saw the numbers on Holman, just one rebound short of a double-double. Meanwhile, Gravit has 16. He's an emerging player for Frank Martin's team. Without question, he has changed the mindset uh, when he comes off of the bench now, he's a he's an elite scorer. He, he realizes that he has as much experience as anyone on his basketball team, in particularly from the perimeter, their most experienced guard back. Halfway through our first overtime. Looks like Holman may be having back spasms on the sideline right now. Huge minutes for the freshman Reggie Perry, number one in black. Weatherspoon picked off by Campbell. Mississippi State 12 and 1, ranked 14th in the country. Its top six scorers back from last year being challenged on the road in their conference opener. Silva swatted by Adu. That's a that's a tremendous matchup because they both have uh, extremely long arms, solid wingspan. Truly humble, 
two of the most humble players you'll see in the league. And you see Holman deciding to fight through those back spasms, and they need him right now. Here's Campbell. Seven to shoot. A little shake and bake. And the putback. Coach are again. Offensive glass in full effect now for the Gamecocks. Starting to look like a Frank Martin team. And a timeout call by Ben Howland. Mike Kotsar doing it on both ends of the court. A career high 23 points tonight. Well, you mentioned he's the unsung hero for South Carolina. So much conversation and dialogue about Chris Silver, but Mike Coatsart was a tremendous part of that Final Four run as well. Has experience and now beginning to gain confidence, doing the little things to help the Gamecocks win. Well, he missed two games this year with a concussion, those two contests against Clemson and Virginia. His previous career high was just 16 points, so Coatsart trying his best to take this game over. Well, he's such a humble individual, uh, a quiet personality, but he knows when to speak up on this basketball team. Why Coach Frank Martin likes him so much is because he can take it, right? Frank Martin, he's passionate, so he gets on you hard. But he's that guy, now that Cinderella Storm was gone, Dwayne Notice is gone. He's that guy that when Frank Martin jumps on the freshman, he actually jumps on him and says, you're okay, you're doing a good job. See some of his highlights, also with eight rebounds, so he's done a really nifty job on the glass tonight, Fish, in right place at the right time. Well, he has a nice motor. That's what I like. And he's actually a very heady basketball player. You got to remember, you see this guy moving up and down the floor. He's 6'11", 264 pounds. So he's a big guy. And we compared one of his dunks earlier to that of Zion Williamson. So <laughs> apparently he's pretty athletic, too. Yeah, that wasn't fair. We, we, we shouldn't have done him like that. But <laughs> give credit where credit is due, uh, not only to the Gamecocks in South Carolina, but to this fan base. This fan base, you got to remember, had a Final Four just a couple of years ago, and I think they got that taste in their mouth and, you know, didn't quite get back. But what they have to realize is as you build a program like Coach Frank Martin did at Kansas State, the fans have to be there before the wins and then you see the wins beginning to come. Out of the timeout, what does Ben Howland draw up here for his club? Oh, he's going, well, obviously you had the ball screen here. You want to go inside to a do, but you knew the play was going to be going inside, whether that was via the ball screen or the pass and getting the post up. I like the play because Mississippi State at times settles from behind the three-point line too much. A do one of two at the line tonight, 74% on this season. Two big attempts coming up right here. And it's a one possession game. And so right now this game is close enough, make or miss, uh, for, for both teams to realize you probably got a couple of more possessions apiece. And so the officials are now blowing the whistle a lot more than they were early in this basketball game. The two Final Four co coaches have been working this crew. And so if I'm South Carolina, I'm attacking the rim and trying to go back inside. Big possession for the Gamecocks. Lawson has it picked off by Peters. Freshman. 83, 82, <laughs> and that was a freshman type move. Now you know what coaches mean when they say the best thing about freshmen is that they become sophomores. Eight to shoot. Coats are. Why not? And a timeout. Mike Coates are 25 points in Fuego. Well, Coach Frank Martin actually talked about that in practice. He said because of the way that Mississippi State hard hedges the basketball screens, he wanted to run those sides. See how far Eric Holman is? Let it go. Look at the recovery. Look at the space. 
he, number one, he didn't do a, do a good closeout, but number two, there was too much recovery space because of the way the Bulldogs hard heads. A nice set call by Coach Frank Martin. Fish, you and I are going to be doing this all year long, or all winter long at least, <laughs> on Tuesday nights in the SEC. If these are the kinds of games we're going to get, it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, are you kidding me? Well, and the reason why it's so much fun is because of the work that was done in non-conference. The SEC, I believe it was 76 or around 74% winning percentage in the non-conference, second best over the last 10 years for the Southeastern Conference. So what that means is if you win games in league, then almost every team gives themselves an opportunity to have some type of postseason play. That's why you have this type of excitement, even with a team in South Carolina that's 67. Super Tuesday has been exactly that. 43 seconds remaining. Mississippi State out of timeouts. We've seen Ben Howland really scheme up some outstanding plays. The ATOs after timeout plays twice to Eric Holman in the second half in an overtime. We saw the rim run by Adu moments ago. I'm going to put you on the spot again. What do you want to see here from the Bulldogs? As good as they shoot the three-point shot with South Carolina in it man-to-man, -man, I run an offensive set, a ball screen, to try to get to the basket quick. But I'm looking for that three-point shot right here on the road if I'm Coach Ben Howard. And you know Peters is thinking about it. In and out. Silva tracks it down, and the shot clock is off, and the Bulldogs have to foul. But I don't like that shot. That's the second time that Lamar Peters has gotten a shot. And I'm a huge fan of Lamar Peters' game. He can separate. He can get a good look whenever he wants to. I've just seen Quindary Weatherspoon make so many of those shots that I like going to him. Or if you're going to go for the three, work the defense a little bit more so you get a better look from behind that three-point line or at the rim. Trey Campbell, two of three at the line tonight. Ten points and a big miss there. Holman wrestles that rebound away from the Gamecocks. You don't have to have a three here. And Weatherspoon calling for the basketball, rightly so. Wow, they there's the a steal. Call. Lawson with the flush. Horrible. That's bad. And, and, and Coach Ben Howland livid on the sideline. Now, there's a lot of hands there, but that's not a foul. But right there, Chris Silva gets him with the body and the arm. That's a tough break down the stretch. I think you have to blow the whistle on that call. Give credit to South Carolina, though. This is a huge opportunity here at home to follow up a tremendous road victory against Florida. An upset brewing in South Carolina's capital city in Mississippi State. Finding out just how hard it is to win on the road in the SEC despite this impressive 12 and 1 start. And who would have thought the South Carolina Gamecocks at 5 and 7 would win their first two SEC games? Back to Carolina, and that'll just about do it. Outstanding follow up and follow through victory by the South Carolina Gamecocks. We mentioned it before. Their record is not indicative of how good this team can truly be this year. An upset in Columbia, 87-82, the final score in overtime. And for Frank Martin, 2-0 in the SEC. Outstanding job. I truly believe this South Carolina team, especially with the Big 12 SEC Challenge now, they get Oklahoma State, has a chance now for some type of postseason play. I'm not saying they're making a tournament run, but they are going to be a tough out every single basketball game. 87-82, the final score. Mike Kotsar, career high, 25 points on 10 of 18 from the floor to go along with nine rebounds, and he was the difference for Frank Martin's club this evening. For Damian Fishback and our entire hardworking ESPN crew, I'm Roy Philpott. Coming up next, it's College Football Live, a big win for Carolina here at home.